Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. I'm really excited to welcome the program author Miriam Auerbach, author of Dirty, Dirty Harriet. Miriam, thanks for calling. Thanks so much for having me, Neil. Oh, it's awesome to talk to you, and, and really the cool thing about it is that every author at the Miami Book Fair, you learn so many different things about them, and I'm sure you do as well, Miriam, when you get to participate in this event and meet all these cool authors and your fans and learn oh, so much. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's very inspiring to meet authors as well as fans that just generates ideas and the creativity starts flowing and it's a wonderful experience. And I've talked to so many authors, Miriam, and it's a labor of love. It's a thing that it, all the hard work of, you know, revising, writing, revising, coming up with characters, absolutely. making changes. You, absolutely. You, it, they, you, you, it's like with my wife and I as teachers, we can talk about teaching, but if we talk to somebody that was not a teacher, they would have no idea what you go through on a daily basis to prepare to have successful books, right? Yeah, and I happen to be a professor as well, so I completely understand what you're saying. It, it requires passion, all of it, whether it's teaching or writing. It's something you have to be passionate about, and I tell the same thing to my students. If they're contemplating studying something, it has to be a topic that they feel very passionately about, or you're not going to stick with it. You're never going to stick with it. You're going to give it up, and you have to be passionate what you choose. And I think, Miriam, it's not always about the money we make. It's about what we enjoy doing in life, because if we don't enjoy what we're doing, we're, we're really uh, we're, 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 we're coming up short. And I hate to hear people say, well, no, you should do something that you're going to uh, uh, make a lot of money at. And if you don't enjoy it, oh, well, no. Our work is supposed to be something we enjoy. And I, I could see that from your passion, you enjoy writing and, and teaching. And, Eric, that's the thing we hear about when we talk to all these mind book fair authors is they, they, they just are so passionate about writing. They really are. you know. And, and what's the old saying? Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> exactly. I do what I love and I never work a day in my life. And that's hey, that's. So that's how I feel. Exactly. I, same here. I love doing radio. Something to strive for. Yeah. It's a, our entrepreneurship, as Eric and I are entrepreneurs, uh, we feel that. I mean, I'm not a school teacher anymore, Miriam, but uh, it's. Uh, I, I still own a touring consulting company and do a lot of different things. But when you're working for yourself and you're able to do something you're so passionate about, it, it's, it's absolutely fun. So tell me about Dirty Harriet and uh, I guess the thought process of writing this book. Um, well, the uh, gem of the idea started one day several years ago while I was watching a Dirty Harry movie marathon on TV, and I didn't quite understand this character's appeal. I knew he was very popular, but I just didn't get it. But suddenly I had a vision of Dirty Harry as a woman, and then this entire character made sense to me, and I said, this is what the world needs is a Dirty Harriet. Um, so uh, the character was born. Um, you know, my thinking along those lines was we have a lot of, you know, strong, silent male um, protagonists in movies and in books, but not so much on the female side. So I pretty much took all of Harry's characteristics and just transplanted them into a female body, and, and that's who we have now. Absolutely, and it's something that uh, uh, I just can't, I, uh, again, something that could definitely be a movie as well, Eric, and uh, uh Interesting to think about when she saw what Dirty Harry was all about, the Create Dirty Harriet. That's, again, the creativity of these authors of the mind book there, Eric. I know. It's really funny. I can only picture – I'm just picturing Dirty Harriet holding a big revolver like Dirty Harry walking around. Oh, that's exactly it. Uh, she carries a 44 <laughs> Magnum just like uh, Harry, and in fact, uh, that's what she used to blow away her abusive husband, and that happens on page one of the book, so it goes on from there. Um, well, she definitely, she seems like she definitely has a vendetta, right? Right off the bat, <laughs> here you go. Um, not so much as the seeking justice. She has what I call an inner vigilante. I love the fact that all these authors that we're talking to today are, are um, basing the stories like in South Florida. Or, you know, have that it's it's really funny because I'm I'm based in St. Petersburg, Florida, and you're down in Miami and it's it's funny seeing um all these these um these books and these, you know, works. I can pick totally picture someone like her driving down the uh, interstate here on a Harley with her gun strapped to her leg or on a holster. There it's you go. it's really That's funny. From reality, right? I mean South Florida and Florida in general I think just provides so much wonderful fodder for fiction. It's like you hardly have to make anything up. It's all here already. Exactly. 
And that's the thing. And uh, so tell me, when, when you were creating the character, how you wanted to make it so it was like a little bit like Dirty Harry, but ultimately someone that's out for justice. And sometimes Dirty Harry really wasn't out for justice, except just to kind of vent. And Dirty Harry, it's not like that, right? Um, yeah, well, uh, a, a bit. I mean, she vents more privately. She, she uh, actually, she vents to her next door neighbor, who happens to be a six foot alligator, uh, because she lives out in the Everglades in a log cabin, um, and so that's that's her means of uh, getting things out, and the alligator responds. But of course, that's really just Harriet, sort of her inner uh, monologue going on there. Um, so she doesn't uh, actually go around too much killing people. Occasionally, she, she, it has to happen uh, that where the bad guys have to be dispensed with. But it's definitely a vigilante um, mentality. Um, she's actually a private eye, so she's not a sworn police officer like uh, Dirty Harry was. So I think she has perhaps a little more leeway to stray from the straight and narrow, which got Harry into more trouble. <laughs> Well, absolutely. I'm looking at the tweets right now involving you and how people are enjoying uh, the book and everything. You must be happy about uh, the, your fans and how they're enjoying this character. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, uh, I have heard particularly from a lot of women how they really enjoy reading about this strong character. I think she's the kind of woman that many of us would like to be. I guess there are many women out there who would like to blow away their husbands. I don't know. Um, but I've also heard from uh, from uh, some men that have enjoyed the book as well, and that's been surprising because I, I did not expect that. So that's been very gratifying. We actually had a comment come in um, on the live chat that said, so true, we need more women doing this. So you have another supporter out there listening in, tuning in today. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. And, and that's, that's the fun thing about live radio, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, discovering and researching this character and coming up with creativity to really make it your own, what do you think was the hardest part of it to create this character, especially when you got the idea and said, okay, now I'm going to do this to make it just special the way you're yeah, able to get it? Well, it's interesting. The character really came to me fully formed, more or less, that day that I was watching those dirty, hairy movies. and then, But it then took a while to bring the whole thing to fruition. So uh, it was like about a year later I went to Europe on a trip and, had jet lag and was lying in bed in London and could not sleep, and suddenly the whole prologue of of this first book really essentially wrote itself right there in my head. I didn't even write it down. I it, it just came into my head uh, mentally, and so that was really the start of it uh, of the character. Then I still didn't quite have a plot, so that uh, took a bit longer, and it was about another year that I was having a random conversation with someone, and that sparked the idea for a plot. So it was finally at that point that I was able to put character and plot together and actually make a book. Definitely, definitely, most definitely. And uh, there you have it, Eric. That's what you, they did to do, and it's that labor of love which we talked about at the beginning of the show. Exactly. I think I might have, since there's such great, uh, uh, like you said, fodder here in Florida, I might have to write a couple of books about some of the interesting people here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no shortage. I mean, I think, yeah, anyone with the, with, as we say, with the passion has, has plenty to write about, particularly here in Florida, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So uh, what, do you, what, do you, what has been the biggest surprise of your fans and, uh, and also your critics about the book? Um, I think, as I say, the biggest surprise just recently has been response from male fans. Um, my book was originally published by Harlequin, which is a romance uh, publisher, so I think that kind of <laughs> kept men away from it. Even though the book is a mystery, um, it really has very little romance. I mean, I mean, she shoots her you know, husband on page one. I don't know how romantic that is, but... Um, I guess there was sort of this taint of romance about it, and uh, men either didn't read it, and the few that did did not like it. So uh, it's now been reissued with a new publisher, uh, Bell Bridge Books, and I've gotten um, kind of quite a bit of positive feedback from men. So, so that's been a real nice uh, and pleasant surprise. And men enjoying the book, uh, that, do they say that somebody they'd like to date? <laughs> Have you heard any um, of those? Things? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has quite quite gone that far. No. <laughs> that reminds me of my wife when she's mad at me. Right? <laughs> 
Right, right. Yeah, in fact, several men have said, well, I don't think I'll share the book with my wife, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. So, so what will you be doing at the Miami Book Fair? Uh, are you on a panel or a uh, um, discussion? Yes, I'm appearing on a panel this afternoon with some fellow members of the Mystery Writers of America. Um, we're going to have four panelists essentially discussing uh, mystery writing. And apart from that, I'm a member of Mystery Writers, and we have a booth here at the fair um, all going on all day long today. And we're going to have quite a few of our members there signing books all day long, so I invite to uh, anyone who's in attendance to come by and meet our authors and get some autographed books. Definitely. And, uh, you, Eric, it's not a far trip, right? People could definitely uh, uh, come and catch, out, catch the Mind Book Fair still from uh, our, our listeners in Tampa, even though we have the international audience right now, they could go out and drive to Miami, right? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's a four-hour drive, and we plan on being back down there next year. So it's an it's a exciting event. All right, Miriam, where can we uh, – yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, Miriam, our listeners definitely want to know more how they can purchase the book and learn more about you. Where, would they, where can they find that info? Um, they can find the book on Amazon. They can find it on barnesandnoble.com. It's available in both print and um, ebook, and they can also order it from any local bookstore. And well, they can get information at my website, www.miriamauerbach.com. All right. Well, it was uh, enjoy the conversation, Miriam, and uh, I'm going to think about that Dirty Harriet and see uh, specifically enough uh, how how she uh, how how that develops and stuff. And and, the, and women need to be strong. And uh, you created a strong character for sure. So thanks for calling. Well, thanks so much for having me, Neil and Eric. You're most welcome. Take care. Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as advice from Life Improvement Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, or editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Life Improvement Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.